Hello, James Patterson here. In this video, I'm going to take you through a few of the new features in Photoshop CC 2014. And these are things that I think photographers and designers are going to find particularly useful. So first off, we have a feature that allows us to select out of focus parts of our image. And I think photographers like myself who are into making composites and selecting different parts of different images to bring them in together are going to find a feature like this particularly useful. It's found under select focus area and the tool will seek out out of focus parts of the image and exclude them from the selection and because we shot this with a really shallow depth of field the area in focus is only really around the eye here so I'm going to need to adjust the in focus range here if I drag this to the right you can see we begin to pick up more of the image so let's bring it to about here maybe slightly more and then we can fine tune things with these tools here. We can add or subtract from the selection. So I'm going to add to it just to try and bring in some of this area over here. And we could also perhaps just go around the hair here and pick out these little bits around the image that haven't been included. And once that's done, we can choose to soften the edge if we like. That's already checked. And we can choose to head straight to refine edge to make further changes, which is quite handy. And then we can simply paint with the refine radius tool around these areas here to come up with a nicer edge to our selection like this. So you can see how quick and easy it is to come up with quite a precise selection and isolate our subject from the background. So I'm going to choose output to layer mask and hit OK with that. And then we could perhaps just add a new layer behind that and just plot a gradient on it like this. Next, I'm going to grab the horizontal type tool from the tools panel over here. And I want to show you a couple of new improvements to type and fonts in CC 2014. So let's just highlight the top layer and then add a couple of words over here. Just make this into a quick birthday card. And now when we go back to our list of fonts with that type layer highlighted, I can try out different fonts and notice how when I hover over the different fonts we get a live preview in our image which is really helpful when choosing a font for your design. And we can also click this little icon here to link in with Typekit and this way we can add lots of different fonts from the Typekit site. And it works the other way too. If perhaps someone sends us a Photoshop document and we don't have the fonts on our system, Photoshop will automatically search for them using Typekit. And one last thing about fonts, we can now type in the search box here to quickly seek out different fonts. So we could even type things like bold to seek out all of the bold fonts. So that just helps to speed up the process of choosing a font. And let's just rearrange these different elements here within our quick design. Next, I'm going to make a new document and create a badge. So I'm going to go to File, New. We'll make it the same size as our first image. And then I'll grab the custom shapes tool here and draw a quick badge using the custom shapes and fill it with red. And then let's just add a quick bevel and emboss layer style to it. And then let's add some more type to it. So I'll grab the type tool and just begin typing here. reposition the elements and we'll add a quick inner shadow layer style just add some depth now I mentioned smart guides earlier and these have been improved in CC 2014 you can find the option to turn them on and off under the view menu in show and we want them on so we'll make sure that's ticked and this is ticked by default when you first install CC 2014. And now as I drag these different elements around, notice how little magenta lines appear when we align them with certain other elements in our image. And if I hold Command or Control, that's Command on a Mac, Control on a PC, we get a display that shows us distances. And this is really useful when positioning elements in relation to everything else. If perhaps I want to make sure this one here is perfectly central, I can move the cursor outside of the shape while still holding the command or control key. And this brings up a series of different measurements here. And I can just make sure that both of these measurements on the right and the left line up. So I can just use my arrow keys 
to punch in until their level so let's bring it to about there somewhere around about there 69 69 yeah that's perfect and we can do the same with this one here if I hold it outside while holding the command or control key and then use the arrow keys you see how quick and easy it is to line everything in your design up so that it's all perfectly central and these measurements also work in relation to one another if I hover over another layer while my today layer is highlighted we get the distance in between the two there and this is quite useful if for example we want to make a series of duplicates of the same shape here so let's just zoom back out and then I can click on the shape hold alt and drag to move it and notice how I can make a quick copy of that layer but then if I want to make a third copy that's the same distance away I can hold the alt key and again drag it and see how the measurements allow me to line up each of the elements so that they're exactly the same distance apart and I think this is one of those improvements that may not seem so special to begin with but over time I think it's going to prove its worth because anybody who's been using Photoshop for years knows how difficult it's been in the past to align different elements up precisely you'd have to bring in different guides and mess with rulers and things like that so something like this is going to be a real time saver now I'm just going to discard my background layer here because I want to save this as a PST so I can just click the little lock icon here to unlock the back layer then hit the backspace key to delete it and I just want to save this so I'm just going to save it in my folder here we'll just call it uh, badge and we'll close it down for now then go back to our other image and I want to place the badge into this document so I'm going to go to file and notice how we have two options here place embedded and place linked and these relate to the way that we can use smart objects I'm going to go to place linked and then I can navigate to that badge PSD and position it wherever I like and then double click to apply so we're able to place the badge as a smart object if I just bring up bridge here you can see that's our badge file there now if we double click the smart object thumbnail here we can edit this so we could perhaps change some of the type here and then save that and of course our badge here has been updated but if we go back into bridge notice how the original file has also been updated because these two files are linked together and it works the other way too let's just save this for a moment we'll call it boy2 and then let's open the badge up and now if we edit this badge here let's change that to three and then save it and then close it notice how the other smart object has been updated so I can imagine using link smart objects like this will be really useful if you have lots of different designs that perhaps have a logo that you want to tweak across the entire range of designs now let's finish off our card here with a quick border so I'm going to add a new layer then go to edit fill and we can choose use pattern and then we have this option down here in scripted patterns to choose a picture frame or we can even choose a tree to create a randomly generated tree but I'm going to go to picture frame and then hit OK and let's go to the frame options here notice how we have lots of different frames to choose from here let's just go for this one here and hit OK to add that frame and then we could perhaps just fine-tune the positioning here until everything looks right now let's move on I'm going to go back to bridge here and go to this image here and if like me you spend as much time in camera raw as you do in Photoshop then you'll be really happy with a couple of tweaks to the way it works so I'm gonna right click here and go for open in camera raw and let's start this off with a couple of tweaks in the basic panel I'm just gonna lift the shadows slightly and perhaps add a touch of clarity and a touch of saturation and notice how we have a couple of options underneath the image here that allow us to compare a before and after in different ways if we click this second icon here we can see that's the before and that's the after after we made those changes to the basic settings so I can see which I prefer and we can also view them in different ways with this first icon here If we just click we can cycle through different options and if I decide that yes I prefer 
that after point I can set the after point as my new before point so that when I go on to make further changes I can compare it to this point in my workflow and I can do that by clicking this little icon here and now you see if I click the before and after here nothing's going to happen because I've set a new before point and then not made any further changes so let's go on and make a couple more changes I'm going to grab the graduated filter tool here from the tools panel and I'm just going to click the minus on the exposure here to just bring that to a negative value and reset everything else. So I'm going to bring that to about minus one and then click and drag down from the sky here towards the land to darken down that sky. We can perhaps go slightly further with it and perhaps knock down the highlights as well. So the graduated filter tool has always been really good for darkening down skies and improving landscapes with straight horizons. But when you've got an image like this, we're darkening down parts of the image up here that we don't really want to affect. Now we could up the shadows perhaps to try and bring back some detail in those areas. But now there's a better way to try and restrict the darkening effect to the sky. We have this option here to adjust the graduated blend of tones with a brush. So let's grab the brush and we also want to go down here and check mask on. And this gives us an idea of how the graduated filter is working. And then we can use the brush tool. We can use the left and right square brackets here to resize the brush tip to either add to the mask, which is not what we want. We want to subtract from it. So let's click this little icon here and then paint to remove the darkening effect over the hills on this side and then we can hit Y to toggle that mask on or off and that's much better and you'll find the same brush settings now in the radial filter too so this is the type of improvement that I think landscape photographers are going to find particularly useful so now I'm going to hit open image to bring it into Photoshop and now I'm going to show you a couple of improvements to the content aware tools let's just zoom in to this building here and I'm going to use the content aware move tool to reposition it so I'm just going to grab the tool from the tools panel and make a rough selection around the area that I want to target and then drag it across to this new area here and if you're used to using the content aware move tool you'll be aware that this is usually the kind of results that you get where it's, it's really one of those tools that I've never really grown fond of in the past but now it's been improved with a couple of tweaks to how content aware works I'm just going to hit command or control and H that's command H on a Mac control H on a PC to hide those marching ants and notice how we have the little cog here with two options structure and color and we can change the look of the move we just made even after we made it by adjusting these settings here if we up the structure we're able to get a better shape but notice how the colors have gone all wrong around the edge here so let's try upping the color here and the further we move this the more it will blend in the colors so you see we're able to get a much better result just by experimenting with structure and color and that's looking much more realistic now I'm going to move on to this image here because I want to show you a couple of great new blur filters in the blur gallery I'm just going to bring up my layers here and this is a document I've cut out the car and then I've filled in the area on the background using content to where I feel to give me quite a messy result but that'll be fine because I'm going to blur that area in a second so I'm going to right click this background layer here and choose convert to smart object and then I'm going to go to filter blur gallery and path blur notice how this gives us the option to create blur that follows a path so we're kind of creating motion blur here so with our image here we can give it the effect of in-camera panning just by dragging the path here and we could adjust the speed we can choose a taper if we like we can make the path of the blur bend slightly if we prefer like this so there's lots of options to characterize the look of your blur and there's also a panel down here called blur effects now in my version of CC here it's invisible I'm not sure whether this is a CC bug or a bug on my system but hopefully in your version you'll be able to see these blur effects and adjust them to fine-tune the look of your blur even further I'll hit OK to apply the path blur and notice how it appears as a smart filter here so we can edit it at any point by double clicking this little icon here now let's convert our top layer into a smart object and I'm going to apply some spin blur so I'll go to filter blur gallery again and this time choose spin blur and this allows us to apply circular blur which is really useful for blurring areas like wheels here to give them a sense of motion so I'm going to 
move the center point here over the wheel and then I can drag the circular area to resize it. So I can move the points by dragging and squeezing in the different angles here. I can rotate it if I like. I'm just trying to position it over the wheel quite nicely like this. We can also use these little inside points here to change the blend area of the blur. And notice how the center point here doesn't quite match up with the center point of the wheel. So I can hold Alt and drag that to reposition it. And then of course I can change the strength of the blur with the little dial here. And also again, there are blur effects, but again, they're not visible in my version here. So hopefully you'll be able to see those to further change the appearance of this blur. Now we can also drag the circle to another area. If I hold Alt and Command or Control and drag the center point there, you can see I can make a quick copy of that blur circle and then of course resize and reposition it in a different way to cover my second wheel over here and again hold Alt and move the center point like this. And then once I'm happy with that I can hit OK to apply and of course because this is a smart filter I can highlight the smart filter thumbnail here and paint with black to remove the blur in areas where I don't want it where it's obscuring some of the details on the car here so I can fine tune the look of the blur like that. Now there are a couple of other features that I think you'll find really useful. I'm just going to go back to this image here and let's just zoom back out. I want to show you a little tweak to the liquify filter that I think is going to be really useful when liquefying. Let's go to filter liquify to bring that up. Now when you're liquefying around the edge of an image, if we just zoom into the edge a little closer over here, notice how we usually get this happening where if we try and pull in from the edge then we're just going to really warp the edges of the frame like this. But there's a new option here in the advanced mode if I toggle that on and then go to pin edges and now when I liquefy from the edge see we're not going to be reshaping the frame of our image so this is quite useful when liquefying around the edges of a frame and one final little improvement that I think is going to prove quite useful is within the brush settings here if we perhaps choose a different brush in the brush presets let's just go for this one and then let's just make a couple of strokes and then perhaps choose a different brush make a couple more strokes and notice how these different brushes are saved in the list here of our last seven used brushes. And if we perhaps go to the brush settings and perhaps up the scattering, and let's make the size slightly larger and go again, then all of those different settings are going to be saved in the brush. So we're able to quickly select the last seven used brushes like this. So there we go, that's my rundown of some of the best new features in Photoshop CC 2014. And there are a few things I haven't even had time to mention, like layer comps, improved performance, and more options for 3D printing. But I hope you find the improvements we talked about useful, and I hope you enjoy using them on your own images. Thanks for watching.